Hello and welcome to this presentation by the Uthelmo channel. This video is about solving an isentropic compression problem using the suave radlich kuong equation of state, which is a widely used cubic equation of state. For that, we will use the XSCOS program. Here is a suggested problem. A continuous stream of 2 kg per second of nitrogen at 240 Kelvin and 0.1 MPa enters an adiabatic and reversible compressor that operates at steady state, exiting at 0.4 MPa. Neglecting changes to the kinetic and potential energies, use the suave radlich kuong equation of state to find the temperature of the exit stream and the compressor power. This slide shows an schematic of the situation. The compressor has a single input stream and a single output stream. If you are unfamiliar with solution of similar problems, you may wish to watch our video Isentropic Compression, which explains how to start from generalized forms of the mass, energy and entropy balances and simplify them to situations with a single input and a single output stream, as is the case here. The outcome of that analysis is that the molar flow rates into the compressor and from the compressor are equal. What we obtain from the energy balance is that the shaft power in the compressor depends on the molar enthalpy difference between the output and input streams and on the molar flow rate. From the entropy balance, the conclusion is that the process is isentropic. Let us now use the Excel-based XSOS program. In the XSOS program, we'll calculate the entropy using the SRK, Suave Radlich Kuong Equation of State, as the summation of two contributions, the ideal gas contribution and the residual contribution, which represents the difference between the entropy of the real fluid and the entropy of the ideal gas at the same condition of temperature and pressure and composition. The residual property is called sometimes departure property or departure function. The ideal gas molar entropy is evaluated using equation 5. And the ideal gas entropy at the reference pressure and reference temperature, P0 and T0, is set equal to 0. The exact form of the integral of Cp divided by T depends on the functional dependence between Cp and temperature. Here, we adopt a third degree polynomial in temperature, and the integration leads to equation 7. The enthalpy calculation follows a similar pattern, adding ideal gas and residual contributions. The ideal gas contribution depends on the integral of Cp dt. And again, using a third degree polynomial, we integrate and obtain equation 11. This spreadsheet contains several cells with orange backgrounds. This indicates values that are specifications, and these include the critical properties the critical temperature and the critical pressure, the eccentric factor, and the Kij, which is the binary interaction parameter. It only matters for mixtures, but we need to have it here in the, on the spreadsheet for compatibility with the XSOS functions. In addition, we have coefficients for a temperature-dependent correlation for the ideal gas uh, heat capacities at constant pressure, the universal gas constant, and the reference temperature and pressure for enthalpy and entropy calculations. With respect to the input and output streams, for the input stream, the mole fraction is specified and it's equal to, U to 1 because it's pure nitrogen and the pressure and temperature. For the output stream, the mole fraction and the pressure. The temperature value that appears of 300 Kelvin with red font is just an initial guess. So it's not really a specification, it's just an initial guess. First, I'll need to use the isentropic condition and to use it, I'll need to calculate the stream entropies, which in turn depend on the ideal gas and on the residual contributions. For the ideal gas contribution, here, this is the formula and this is the same formula that appeared on the slides the integral of Cp divided by T and the pressure contribution. Here for the input stream, on the row below for the output stream with the current estimate of 300 Kelvin. 
Now I need to calculate the residual properties. For that, I'll use an XSUS function called SRK res v. It returns four values, which are molar residual properties divided by either RT or R. This function returns the Gibbs energy enthalpy, entropy and heat capacity at constant pressure. So I'll type here and it takes a series of arguments, the first of which is the value of R, of the universal gas constant, which will always call from the same position and I lock this position with F4 in Excel. The next argument is the temperature, then the pressure, then the mole fraction, and then the parameters of the model, which are the critical properties, a centric factor, Kij values, and these parameters will always come from the same cells, and like I did for the universal gas constant, lock these positions with F4. Now I close the parenthesis, and before I try to make this calculation, it's important to stress that Excel functions that return multiple values, as is the case here, are activated by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Enter, all three keys at the same time. So I'll do it now. Control Shift, Enter. To get the properties of the output stream, I just drag down and I have it. These properties, all of them are dimensionless. And now I need the residual entropy in SI units. And to do that, I take the dimensionless quantity SR divided by R, and I multiply by the value of the universal gas constant, and I need to always remember to lock this position. So here is the residual, molar residual properties of the input stream. I drag down, and I get the value for the output stream. So I have at this moment, the ideal gas molar entropy and the residual molar entropy of the input and output streams. I now get the molar entropy by adding the ideal gas contributions and the residual contributions. Here's for the input stream. Here is for the output stream. The process is meant to be isentropic, and therefore the difference between the molar entropies of the output stream and of the input stream that I'm calculating now should be zero, but it's not. It's not because the temperature of the output stream that I'm using is, has just been a guess. I need to get the correct value now, and to do this, I come to data, solver and my goal is that the delta s cell takes the value of zero by changing the temperature of the output stream which is this cell that currently has the value of 300 kelvin i press solve and it has found the solution and the solution is that the temperature of the fluid after the compressor is 356.3 Kelvin. This was the first question in our problem. The next question had to do with calculating the compressor power and to do that I need to know the molar enthalpies before and after the compressor. These molar enthalpies will be the summation of the ideal gas and residual contributions and first I need to take the dimensionless residual enthalpy and get it in SI units. I need to multiply by the universal gas constant, which I again lock with F4 and multiply by the stream temperature.
and I drag down to get the value for the output stream. To get the molar enthalpy of each stream, I add the ideal gas and residual contributions, input stream, output stream, I now need to convert my flow rate from a mass base to a molar base. And I have that the mass flow rate is two kilograms per second. And I know that the molar mass of nitrogen is 0 0.028 kilograms per mole. I divide the mass flow rate by the molar mass and I get a molar flow rate of about 71.4 moles per second. The shaft power will be the molar flow rate times the enthalpy difference between output and input streams. And this is the value in watt and the shaft power in kilowatt is this value divided by a thousand and the shaft power that I obtain is about 242 kilowatts. This concludes the solution of this problem.